On April 29, 2024, the Regional Plan Association RPA, released a report about the Hudson Tunnel Project (HTP). According to the report, this project is expected to bring about significant economic benefits. It's estimated that the HTP will contribute $19.6 billion to the economy and create around 95,000 jobs during its construction phase. This is an increase of 20,000 jobs compared to previous estimates. The report is based on research conducted for the Gateway Development Commission (GDC). This research looked into the early works components of the Hudson Tunnel Project, which are already in progress. These components, valued at approximately $1 billion in awarded contracts, are predicted to generate 7,500 jobs and provide $625 million in labor income. But just what is this project, and why is it so important? Trains traveling between New York City and New Jersey, as well as those heading further south to destinations like Philadelphia, Baltimore, or D.C., often face delays. The reason behind these delays can be traced back to a single aging tunnel under the Hudson River, which has been in operation for 113 years, serving as a bottleneck for train traffic. The North River Tunnel, NRT, which began operating in 1910 under the Pennsylvania Railroad, was designed to meet the standards of its time. However, with only two tracks, it creates a bottleneck for train travel between New York and New Jersey. This single-track system often leads to significant delays along the Northeast Corridor NEC, whenever there are service disruptions. The tunnel's reliability has been further compromised by damage sustained during Superstorm Sandy in 2012. The storm flooded both tubes of the NRT with seawater, causing ongoing harm to its structural, mechanical, and electrical components. This damage results in frequent train breakdowns, signal failures, and persistent delays. When one tube is unavailable due to maintenance or incidents, the remaining tube must handle all inbound and outbound traffic, reducing capacity by up to 75% and causing extensive delays. During peak periods, the usual 24 trains per hour using the NRT can plummet to as few as six. To address these challenges, the Hudson Tunnel Project will construct two additional tracks and renovate the existing ones. This will result in a total of four modern tracks connecting New York and New Jersey. These improvements will enhance operational flexibility, provide redundancy in the rail network, and bolster resilience against future disruptions to the Hudson River rail crossing. The North River Tunnel and the Hudson Tunnel Project play a critical role in the 457-mile NEC, the busiest passenger railroad in the United States, stretching from Boston, Massachusetts to Washington, D.C. Steven Sigmund from the Gateway Program overseeing the upgrade of rail infrastructure along the Northeast Corridor explains that the tunnel's outdated condition has been a known issue for decades. Its limited capacity leads to frequent delays, affecting hundreds of thousands of commuters daily. Fortunately, there's hope on the horizon. Construction has officially begun on both sides of the river for the Hudson Tunnel Project, a 4.5-mile endeavor. This expansion promises reduced delays for passengers and the potential for more service options in the future, including the utilization of Amtrak's new high-speed Acela fleet, in the Northeast, the rail system typically boasts four to six tracks, except for a crucial section under the Hudson River. Steven Sigmund points out the irony. The busiest stretch narrows down to just one track in and out, creating a bottleneck for the entire corridor. This bottleneck sets off a chain reaction of delays throughout the region. Passengers find themselves stuck on trains, waiting for clearance to proceed, sometimes all the way back to New Brunswick. These delays have far-reaching consequences, affecting around 800,000 riders and impacting 20% of the nation's economy. The repercussions of any disruption to the tunnel are severe. Even a planned shutdown of just one tube would result in staggering economic losses, increased carbon emissions, and even longer commutes for already frustrated travelers. 
Despite previous setbacks, the Gateway program is determined to see the Hudson Tunnel project through. They're committed to completing the project within its budget of $16.1 billion and meeting the target opening date of 2035. Recent progress includes the start of construction on both sides of the river, concrete casing installation in New York, and groundbreaking in North Bergen, New Jersey. This marks a historic milestone, with work underway simultaneously on both ends of the tunnel. Ultimately, a series of nine contract packages will come together to create the tunnel, promising relief to commuters and bolstering regional connectivity. The large-scale Hudson Tunnel project is poised to benefit countless train travelers, yet the aim is for construction not to disrupt anyone in the years to come, a crucial condition for securing federal funding through the Gateway program. Steven Sigmund talked about the importance of maintaining current service, emphasizing its integral role in the regional and national economy. Any breakdown in the system can have ripple effects, affecting the daily movement of people and goods. Looking ahead to the completion of the new tunnel in 2035, plans include rehabilitating each of the existing tracks one at a time. Despite the ongoing work, having at least three operational tunnels during this period will represent an improvement over the current service. Ultimately, the goal is to have four fully refurbished tracks that can serve commuters for the next century. The project's enhancements extend beyond increased capacity. Jeannie Kwan from Amtrak has highlighted the improved resilience and operational flexibility of the Northeast Corridor, which is crucial for addressing climate change and congestion. These improvements align with Amtrak's broader goals of doubling ridership by 2040 and achieving net-zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2045. Moreover, the expanded track capacity will support other initiatives like the Bergen Loop, part of the Gateway program, aiming to provide seamless one-seat train service from various lines into New York's Penn Station. The Hudson Tunnel project represents a significant stride toward bringing U.S. rail service in line with global standards. With the largest ever federal grant for mass transit, there's a clear commitment to modernizing infrastructure and ensuring that outdated systems, like those dating back to 1910, are no longer relied upon. Jeannie Kwan emphasizes the importance of not clinging to outdated infrastructure and technology, particularly in a bustling metropolis like New York City. The Hudson Tunnel Project signifies a crucial step forward, promising a more efficient and reliable train travel experience for commuters and travelers alike. Currently, the project appears set to move forward without delay. This means civil engineers will soon be preparing to delve into the muddy depths of the Hudson River, described by Chris Barkin, a railway engineering professor at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, as having a consistency akin to toothpaste. Barkin explains that while underwater railway tunnels are not a new concept, they pose unique challenges compared to their above-ground counterparts. Unlike tunnels in mountainous terrain, which are typically bored through rock, a Hudson River tunnel would traverse substantial bodies of rock on either side, but would be submerged in viscous river-bottom mud, presenting distinct engineering hurdles. Building underwater tunnels offers engineers three primary approaches. They can employ the tunnel shielding method using a wooden and iron framework to support the tunnel's shape while miners excavate the earth. Alternatively, they may utilize a tunnel boring machine to mechanically drill through rock and soil. Finally, engineers could prefabricate sections of the tunnel on land and then lower these segments to the riverbed where they can be assembled manually by divers. Building underwater tunnels requires sturdy materials like concrete and steel to withstand the water pressure. While such engineering feats come with risks, Chris Barkin emphasizes that for a bustling city like New York, tunnels offer significant advantages over above-ground solutions. One key advantage of railway tunnels in urban areas like New York City is the ability to access central urban areas without using valuable land that could be better utilized for other purposes, Barkin explains. This access allows for railway stations to be located conveniently near residential areas, workplaces, and retail centers. The project aims to enhance the reliability and sustainability of both regional and national rail networks, 
benefiting the customers who rely on these services. By doing so, it brings significant social, economic, and environmental advantages. Here's what the HTP High Speed Train Project will achieve. It will remove a potential risk for a regional economy that contributes significantly to the country's GDP. Specifically, the economies of New York and the Northeast Corridor account for a considerable portion of the nation's economic output. During the construction phase, the project is expected to create over 72,000 jobs, both directly and indirectly. The construction period will stimulate economic activity, generating around $19 billion in total. The economy will receive a boost through monthly spending of approximately $87 million on materials and labor during the construction phase. To support domestic industries, the project will prioritize suppliers and manufacturers from across the United States. This is in line with the Buy America, Build America requirement for federally funded purchases, ensuring involvement from minority-owned, women-owned, small, and disadvantaged businesses. However, two key officials at the Gateway Development Commission, responsible for overseeing the ambitious $16 billion project to construct a new two-track rail tunnel and repair an existing one beneath the Hudson River, are stepping down. Eric Dalio, the Chief Program Officer, and Megan Strickland, the Deputy Chief Program Officer, announced their departures, as shared by Chris Kaluri, the GDC's President and CEO, in a message to staff on Monday. Both Dalio and Strickland were very important to the project and had legal backgrounds and had previously worked in the Capital Programs Department at New Jersey Transit before joining the Commission nearly two years ago following Kaluri's appointment as CEO. Their arrival coincided with the Commission's primary objective of establishing a robust governance structure to demonstrate its capability to oversee what is anticipated to be the largest federally funded transit infrastructure endeavor to date. The Commission is also on the brink of finalizing a significant milestone as it nears a full funding grant agreement with the Federal Transit Administration, signaling progress in the project. The new tunnel will link North Jersey tracks utilized by Amtrak and New Jersey Transit to New York Penn Station, while subsequent efforts will focus on refurbishing the existing tunnel, which has been operational since 1910 and suffered extensive damage during Superstorm Sandy in 2012. As the agency transitions from establishing its organizational footing to prioritizing program management, it faces a critical juncture with the selection of a project delivery partner, with over 40 employees, the GDC is gearing up to oversee the implementation of major construction contracts in the coming weeks and months. That'll do it for this video, folks. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more. See you soon in the next one.